Hello, welcome, namaste. My name is Jenny Bond. I'm Asian, I'm a female. I go by her, she, hers. I have light skin. I have medium length black hair. I'm wearing a vintage wine colored dress with puff sleeves as also a bow to my right. I have uh, behind me a bookcase uh, full of books, um, four bookcases. And welcome to my talk. Today, I am speaking uh, at the Raising Our Voices 2020 American Anthropological Association Conference. It's Watch My View by Demand presentation. And it's specifically about Cambodian Americans, barriers and bridges to higher education success. My name is Jenny Bond, and I, I'm an assistant professor at Cal State Fresno. My positionality, I'm a Sino-Southeast Asian American, but I identify as Asian American. My background is I have a BA at UCLA in anthropology. I have an MA at Claremont Graduate University in cultural studies with emphasis in public policy. My master's is in anthropology at University of California, Riverside, UCR. My PhD is also at the same school, UCR, in anthropology. My methods. I interviewed over 40 Southeast Asian Americans in California. 10 were Cambodian Americans. I specifically asked them, what are your educational barriers and bridges? And this is an IRB approved uh, research project and all my participants were from California. Now let's talk about first the background of Cambodian Americans from what happened in Cambodia that affects them today. Well, the background migration history of Cambodian Americans. In the mid 1970s, the Khmer Rouge, also known as Pol Pot uh, leader, uh, took over and controlled Cambodia. This elicited a terrible genocide where over 1 million people were murdered. The Khmer Rouge murdered all the doctors, all the lawyers, all the teachers. In fact, they took all the ballerinas one day, took them into a room and shot them. Anyone who's intellectual, if you spoke a different language, if you're a minority, even at the end, if you wore glasses, you were murdered. They wanted to do something called a year zero. This was terrible and had had long range effects even today. Now, actually, President Carter in 1980s, he signed the US Refugee Act, which allowed Southeast Asians, particularly Hmong, Mien, Kamu, Vietnamese, and Cambodians to immigrate en masse to United States. This expanded the 1975 Indo-Chinese Migration and Refugee Assistance Act. It rate admittances from 17,400 to 50,000 refugees. Now there's something called the model minority myth, which is a false narrative that all Asian Americans are doing great and well. It was actually many origins, but one origin is this person, sociologist, William Peterson. He wrote this uh, New York Times Magazine article called Sex Story, Japanese American Style, 1966, which basically is depicted Japanese people are with, despite the dis uh, massive discrimination of uh, being interned, are very successful. This, of course, is a very false negative narrative that no Asian American has ever said of themselves. Asian Americans are now seen as good Asian Americans, right? And they're pitted against African Americans and Latinos as, quote, bad, right? So it's a, a divide and conquer technique that they did. Also, this pits East and South, uh, South Asians who actually have a lot of poverty in themselves, but with because of Min Zhao and Jennifer Lee, they prove in their book, great book, Asian Paradox, is because of hyper selection of immigration, a lot of these East and South Asians actually came in with doctorate degrees. So they, of course, their children did well in college. Now this pits them against the quote, bad Southeast Asian Americans. If you look at the Asian American aggregate graduation, you're looking at 51%. So if you just look at that number, you think Asian Americans are doing great. But it actually, that large number obscures what's happening on the little level or smaller ethnic groups, particularly for graduation of Cambodians. Look at Cambodian graduation rates. That's a 13.5%. Now there's lots of socioeconomic and health barriers. 
50% of uh, their parents have less than high school education, stereotypes of being a gang member, religion, people argue in the literature, it's a, it's a barrier. Of course, poverty and mental health, lack of social economic capital, and low engagement with faculty staff. Now, one disturbing thing that I'm going to read over is the inter-ethnic discrimination, which is a barrier. One disturbing finding was that many of the Cambodian American students were marginalized by other students, particularly those of other Asian ethnicities. The students shared that Cambodians were viewed negatively by students of other racial ethnic groups based largely on stereotypes, i.e. IG, perceptions of Cambodians as being poor. For example, students of other Asian ethnicities did not like being identified as Cambodians. There's also cultural barriers. No classes about their ethnic history, culture, and identity. No Cambodian history classes. No language classes. Also, culturally, it is not, you don't ask for help. It's embarrassing. So again, Cambodians remain silent about their real academic struggles and also their social, political, and economic struggles. Also, there's also traditional values regarding gender and familiar expectations where the man has to take care of the family, which also can be a barrier. There's also a language barrier. Related to ethnicity, language communication may be a key barrier between the staff and students or parents given the limited number of Cambodian and Khmer speaking staff. Other barriers, mental health due to trauma, residing in poor areas, which have a lot of community violence, high rates of debilitating mental health conditions, poverty and community violence, also uh, interrupted educational experiences due to the genocide, and also just mistrust of institutional agents. Now let's go to the second half, which is barriers. Se I'm sorry, second, third. Financial aid is a bridge that would be helpful for, for Cambodian Americans to do better in school parental activism, ethnic clubs, and community involvement. Parental activism. My parents financially work for, to support us. They work hard. They work 16 hours, 18 hours a day, 365 days a year to get us to college. They moved us out of bad neighborhoods, schools, and states for our safety. This is Sharon, a Cambodian American successful voice, and she talks about this is the reason her parents, who are not educated at all, really uh, did many things to help her their, as much as they could, their, their students. Ethnic clubs are a bridge. I want to say being Cambodian American as a female, like when I went to college and I joined the ethnic club, which is Cambodian club, and I wasn't alone, but now I'm okay. I'm starting over and there's a fear of being alone, but my faith, again, religion as, a, uh, as uh, in the literature as a both Barry and bridge makes me feel like I'm not alone. And that's, it's always possible. Another uh, quote from the interviews. Growing up, I think it was always been instilled in us. My parents personally have always told me that knowledge was power because under the Khmer Rouge, they had everything stripped away from them. Because of this, I network and always ask for help. Henry, a community advocate. CBO bridges, which is, uh, uh, for example, Fresno or Firm. Uh, targets populations. Um, these are community-based organizations, and they uh, t they are target um, refugee communities in key issues like health, education, advocacy, outreach, and ministry. And Firm is one of those organizations. Also, the Kamai Girls in Action, located in Long Beach, target populations, Southeast Asian youth. Um, they key issues to talk about gender, racial and economic justice, culture, arts, leadership, community organizing. Wonderful. Recommendations, college outreach programs, service learning to cultural centers, Cambodian American classes, Asian American studies classes, Asian American minors, and Asian American professors. Other uh, bridges, AVID, uh, which is a college prep program, Upward Bound, Journey to Success, Th Southeast Asian uh, Action Center, uh, May, May, the Meditation, Agriculture, Yoga, and Education, Cambodian uh, Culture Center. Example, what they do there, which is culturally competent and from the community, is they do gardening, group gardening, communal eating, and cooking. These have been, by that community, have been shown to be therapeutic and helpful. Also, Lastly, I went to the Cambodian uh, uh, club members and I asked them, uh, what do they want? Uh, these are Cambodian club members at Fresno State, and this is what they told me. 
They wanted more heritage and culture classes. They wanted Khmer language classes. They need and want Asian American studies classes, Asian American majors, and more Asian American professors. It's like to thank you so much for attending my talk.